everybody. Welcome to Big Dumb Monsters. I'm Nick. And I'm Chris. And this week, we watched The Island of Dr. Moreau, the uh, the 90s version of the movie. There were four previous to this, three previous to this. I, I, yeah, at least yeah. like two or three, I want to say. Yeah. Um, mm, just misses the mark. Like, Could have been good. Could have been amazing. This, this literally... Could have been the best sci-fi movie of the '90s, but uh, it did not go there. Did didn't didn't do it. Did it bad. Um, but we'll get into the the details of you know, exactly why we feel that way. Um, man, this could have been amazing. Anyway, big dumb monsters talking about the island of Doctor Moreau. Enjoy the show. piece of shit and turn on the other piece of shit yeah <laughs> what's up everybody <laughs> <laughs> we're watching the island of dr moreau tonight only because i'll i'll, I'll admit i fucked up you did you i did fucked. we but we had been talking about watching yeah this movie. i think what happened like i was gonna suggest are you about to drop a what happened was a what happened was <laughs> <laughs> so last week at the end of the show we were like yeah Let's, you know, we're going to do Lucio Fulci zombie. Yeah, we're like, because it's October. We're going to do, like, more, like, traditional, like, spooky shit. Yeah. Yeah. We I fucked up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, what happened was yesterday, like, out of the blue, I was just like, oh, yeah. Instead of, like, checking with the group, I was like, oh, I'm just going to watch The Island of Dr. Moreau because that's what we're doing this week, obviously. I, I totally remember agreeing to do this. Yeah. And then, like, as I finish watching the movie, Nick's like, we're doing zombie this week, right? Like, fuck! <laughs> Pivot! <Yeah>. Pivot! <laughs> so, my bad. I apologize. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to... The only person... On iPad. The only person that knew that it was going to be zombie is Sam. Yeah. Because I was talking to him about it. And, uh... Surprise, motherfucker! Yeah. Some fries, motherfucker! <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> French fries, motherfucker, as soon as the show is over. Yeah. Because uh, I haven't had dinner yet. Uh, what the fuck are you doing with your life? I don't know, man. I, I you know, Don't ask that question. That's a, <laughs> it's a hot topic recently. Uh, uh. Uh, anyway. Yes. You know what? I should probably open up uh, Twitch on my tablet here because, you know, why not not be a piece of shit? Yeah, I did the same thing. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's a rough week, folks. It's a rough week. Bear with us. Uh, but we did watch The Island of Dr. Moreau instead of Zombie. We'll be watching Zombie next week. Uh, We've actually got the next two weeks plotted out. Yeah, oh, we can, To stick with the spooky, though, we can change that other one. I no, I, I like the other one. All right. That is spooky, but it's fun. Yeah, all right. All right. I feel, I feel we changed it up a little bit. We're yeah. not going to tell you what that movie is yet, but it's going to be coming. Mm -hmm. We are also going to... Well, we'll say it now before I forget. We'll have another announcement, hopefully, next week uh, that will also be fun. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have, um, I'd like more, for that to be a thing. Yeah, more more to come tomorrow. Uh, but we'll say, keep your Halloween you know, in that area open, let's say. Uh, but probably Halloween. Hopefully, yeah, because yeah. I I need to schedule my life. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I had to switch some stuff around. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. All right, then we're Halloween doing Halloween is good, bud. Then we're doing it on Halloween. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, you know, hey, look, I, we got to be flexible. I know, I know you're going with the flow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> cool. Anyway, Halloween. Uh, we are doing The Island of Dr. Moreau tonight. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't know. This movie gets shat upon. It does. Yeah. Because uh, it's not great. It's not great. I don't... After watching it this time, though, it's been a long time since I watched this, I don't think it's as shit uponable uh as maybe has made made up over the years i i mean shit uponable is an interesting turn of phrase yeah 
Um, yeah, it's not. It's not as bad as it has a reputation of being. It's still also not good. Yeah. Oh no no no. Yeah. It's, it's by no means a good movie. <clears throat> <laughs> but I, it, it, I don't think it's as big a mess as it has been made out to be. But it, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's a fucking no, mess. It's a mess. It's yeah, definitely yeah, a fucking yeah. mess. And there's a lot of reasons why it was a mess. Um, But it even starts off a mess. Like, it's, it's like, what are these guys doing in this boat? Who are those? What are those uniforms? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, I mean, I guess that, it drops you in. But like, you don't need to know that for the purposes of the story, though. Like. You know, it just starts off in conflict. Yeah. Um, you don't know why, and like it, you're on to a new thing before you even remember. Like, oh, why was I? You know, gone? there are, there are so many things that happen in this movie that you do not have time to process. Yeah, yeah. And it's problematic. Yeah. And I like the bones of this movie. Like this had the chance to be one of the best sci-fi movies of the 90s. It really did. Yeah, oh no, for sure. It yeah. really did. It had potential. Uh, it it wasted fucking a... squandered every <laughs> bit of it. See, I there was a time I would say every bit. I was entertained watching this. Again, I'm not going to say this was a good movie by any means, but I'm like, yeah, but eh, it wasn't. It wasn't as big of a turd as like I remember it being in my in my memory. But where this where this winds up being and where it had the potential <laughs> to go, yeah, are oh, drastically, drastically different. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah what it could have been it like you know i don't know if this is in the trivia but it, it suffers from a director switch like, oh yeah yeah mid midstream uh, and diva actors yeah like yeah what the fuck <laughs> don't we'll, want to point we'll anybody out specifically but val kilmer is pretty uh is, brando is, too yeah, yeah that's true yeah yeah. yeah yeah we'll get into all that because i got a bunch of that in the trivia all right but uh it's just like the 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 basics like you boil this down and you've got this really cool concept of like what is a man what is god what is an animal like how how does it all blend together where does man wind up in the in the structure of the human condition and <laughs> it kind of just ditches that for like a, a an action and not even an action movie not, like, yeah like it it it's not an action movie. It's not really a horror movie. It's a sci-fi movie, really. Yeah, it is sci-fi. Um, it just mm, it falls so short. And like, I don't need a shoehorned romance plot in this movie. Like, yeah. it, it was fine. And you know, like, I'm a, you know, I'm a fan of everybody that's in it. You know, like, um, you know, Feruza Balk is awesome, but like. She need to be in this. Oh, like '90s Chris had a huge Fruza Ball crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, and it's not really a problem that she's in the movie, uh, because you know her her character has a an actual point. Like she's you know the closest thing to perfection that that experiment has gotten to. Cool. Like, but they don't need to fall in love and and all this shit. Like, yeah. Brave of them actually is a brave choice to to kill her. In the fucking movie, like I actually appreciate that. Yeah, but like, there's just like so many things that happen. You're like, oh, that's interesting, and then they just walk away from it, and then it brings something else up, and you're like, oh, that's interesting, and they walk away from that. It's like, I, I, like, I guess, like this movie could have been a little longer. It's about an hour and a half, but like hour 45 hour 50 i think you could have like really like delved into some more of the details of yeah. everything and it would have been cool and i don't think i would have been like let's go like speed it yeah, up yeah i'm trying to like cuz there, there are things that i think could have been cut like streamlined and then like yeah i think it did need a little bit more a little bit more time to it to flesh out some of the like yeah give the questions me, give of me like more of the the culture of of them like the sayer of the law like where the fuck is that yeah, obviously from? this like, person has like an important position like yeah. why <laughs> and he's just kind of there yeah but like he's important in the in the society that he's presented in in the movie he's not that important in the movie yeah which is like they really fumbled too because first of all 
Ron fucking Perlman. All right, like give the man some some time to cook. But they could have done more with the science, you know, like uh, you get that lab scene at toward the end of the movie where he's like, oh, they were going to use my DNA to to stop your regression. OK, like how? It's like, give me a little bit more of that. Like, yeah, give, yeah. give me the science, like give me the science fiction, not just the conflict of man and animal. Yeah, I think this got a little bit caught too caught up in the spectacle of things and not enough into the like the details in the yeah. story yeah um is it like there's a lot of like philosophy in this and 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 like things that they could really really like drag out and they just kind of gloss over yeah yeah you're right um what else is there to say about this? I mean, the effects are cool. I think the animal effects are cool. Um, uh, the CG that they used was not. That was definitely not like the leopard man running around. Like, yeah, yeah no, and the, and the little that. rat creatures. Yeah, that's right. The rat, like, dogs or whatever, whatever the fuck they were yeah, supposed to be. Yeah, whatever they were. Little rat pirates. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, why do we only see them for like five seconds and then never, like, that never gets referenced again. Because CG is expensive, my friend. That's, but, like, hey, somebody could say, like, hey, remember that time we tried to make little rat men and they turned into these, like, yeah. fa- you know, like, give us a little bit of ex- explanation of where these things came from. Yeah, but they won't do that. Um, I don't know. Like, it's just, like, there's so much wasted potential in this movie. And, and I think they knew exactly what they had. But all of the production problems just like stripped all the soul out of the fucking thing yeah yeah it is a a genetic mutation of, on its own of film yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> ironically enough yeah it's uh like like i was more disappointed than anything watching it like and and there were cool scenes like there was cool stuff i love just like the broad strokes of this movie Mm -hmm. i love i've never seen the four other iterations of this i think it was an hg wells story i think so yeah i've never seen any of the other like movie adaptations i've never read the story but like it's gotta be a great story otherwise they wouldn't keep keep trying to make it keep trying yeah Yeah. and i think this was just the the final nail in the coffin because i don't think they've tried since I think there's another one in the works. Is there? Yeah. Uh, depending on who's attached to it, it might it might be awesome. It like, could, yeah, it could be. I think it has to be like a mini series. Like it can't be. I don't think it's a story that can be wrapped up in a two hour movie. No, because like, they, like they, they keep trying. Yeah. And obviously, if they want to keep doing it again, like there's, like there's no like there's something missing. Yeah, yeah. I think it needs to be like an HBO like limited series or something like, you know, something like prestige like that. Yeah, one of those like six episode fucking bangers. Yeah. I'm oh, in. Like no sequel, just boom, that's it. Just yeah. the story. Yeah. No like season 2, yeah. like don't yeah, add don't, break up don't the story. add. Yeah. Exactly. You can stretch it out, but don't get carried away with it. Yeah. Um Yeah, I mean like Great cast, awesome story. Like said, shit like, execution, shit execution. Yeah, yeah really. It's, it's got really the is. elements. I mean, like, it's a beautiful looking movie. I want to say Stan Winston creatures. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like the location is amazing. You know, you said the acting, fucking stack. The a- no, no, no. The actors, great. Yeah, the yeah, acting, <laughs> not weird. I don't know how. Okay. Follow this train of thought that I had while I was watching this. Like, you take Val Kilmer, right? Who in... What year did this come out? 96. 96. So, what? Three years earlier was in Tombstone? I think that was 93? That was 90... Was 93 or 94? Either way. Yeah. But previous to this, right? Yeah. Arguably the most interesting character in one of the best westerns ever made. Yeah. Yeah fucking wallpaper in this movie yeah but i think i think at this point though like going meta i think val kilmer is you know high on his own supply so to speak he was high on his own supply and yeah. going through like some personal shit but like yeah go to work dude um 
if I am not mistaken, wasn't that whole character just created for him because he couldn't figure out who the fuck he wanted to play in this movie? Mm-mm. Nope. I thought that I thought I'd heard that somewhere. Like that no, Mitchell character. Had, no, because they had other like actors lined up to to maybe play that character too. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, but no, I thought at one point he was supposed to be like the Thulis character. Um, at one point maybe he was, he was even supposed to be Moreau. No, he he wasn't going to be Moreau. I think he was supposed to be Douglas, and then they switched because Val Kilmer was going through a bunch of shit. Like, like this was like right after he found out through like a TV interview that he was getting divorced. Oh Jesus! Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, and this was like shortly after his Batman. Yeah, Batman. Uh, Batman forever? Robin is ninety seven. So it was Batman, Batman Forever. Forever is ninety five. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's probably just fucking. He's, he's, he's Val like, Kilmer. I'm, I'm, up in this I'm movie. Val Kilmer. Right? Yeah. So I don't need that. I don't yeah, need that he's Val basically Kilmer. he's residual Jim Morrison, like right mm. now, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want that Val Kilmer from Tombstone. I want that Val Kilmer from Real Genius, from fucking Heat, for God's sake. I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. Wait, that's not the line, though, is it? Did we recently discover that? It's Huckleberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huck, uh, Huck Bear or whatever, yeah. Uh, I really wish this was better. I really wish this was better. Like, I wanted it to be so yeah, fucking good. I remember being good. so psyched for this movie, like, when I saw the preview for it. Like, it, yeah. it, it, it fucking looked amazing, you know? Yeah. Fucking animal men going crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, like, we don't get, like, animal men on a rampage, like, which, you know. Uh, you do in the last, like, five minutes of the movie, which is kind of all I wanted from it. Yeah. But I wanted more tension and build to that because like you can kind of see a little bit of like some of the ones that are regressing a little bit or whatever the hell they said, like retrogressing which isn't a fucking word but Furuza Balk just practice pole dancing or whatever like yep. fucking out in the uh yep it's just like I think he told her just like pretend you're on mushrooms <laughs> pretend you're Val <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know man it's just a fucking disappointment um i was going somewhere where was i going i got distracted by Feruza ball same here yeah uh <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, it does, it does, animal it does, it does, Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so it's not like it. It doesn't feel like a natural progression to that big finish. They just wanted a big finish, so it's like yeah. let's get there as fast as we can. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. It is no like. I think this movie really fucking goes downhill when Brando dies, and that's not oh, yeah. to say that like. Brando was the one holding the movie together because clearly he fucking wasn't. No. Yeah. No. He had he had a weird like cool presence in this movie. Like I liked when his character was on screen. Yeah. He had this weird like he was yeah, I don't know man. It was like he's like the Wizard of Oz basically. Like, like the Wizard of Oz. But yeah. Like he he was carrying this like um papal kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. He had uh, it was wearing all the white, and he had like he was being hauled around in the in the carriage or whatever. And I like that like weird religious overtone because it it feels right for what his character is doing. Yeah, uh, because he's he's basically playing God. So they they lean into that, and I appreciate that. I just wish there was a little bit more of that, or more of the story around that. And it just it just kind of like it throws that thing at you, and then yeah, it, and it, then everybody's upset and he gets killed. Yeah, I was gonna say, it probably suffers from Brando being Brando. Like he's not going to show up every day. Like clearly he didn't. Like yeah. fucking, you know, he's just going to fucking half ass it and then just get the fuck out. Like yeah, and yeah, like he's not going to put in the character work at this point in his career. Like no, you know, which is ridiculous because like he's known he, like he was known for being 
the best actor that we had. Like he was the best, like on the planet. Yeah. Like yeah, that was yeah. his reputation. Like he was the most actory ass actor that we could get. And like if you were to show somebody one movie and you pick this movie to like prove that, yeah. they're gonna be like, What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, this crazy motherfucker? Yeah. It's just like he was so revered in Hollywood. Like people wanted to be in this movie because they got a chance to it, work yeah. with Marlon Brando. Yeah. And then he's just like, meh. Uh, I'm just gonna go eat pizzas. Yeah. Like, that's a case of don't meet your heroes, like for yeah. sure, yeah. 100 percent yeah <sighs> yeah all right you ready to rate this thing yeah yeah let's do some ratings okay i'll go first i th- i think it's right on the line it's a five yeah no i'm right there with you like i said like if when I remember, like I said, when I first saw this, like hating this fucking movie, like that's yeah. like you know, knowing like at fucking sixteen or seventeen, whenever I saw this, like this is a piece of shit. Then there's a lot of weird undertones that you might not pick up when you're younger. Yeah, you know. So going, you know, watching it now, I did, I did appreciate a more of like what they were going for, like yeah, more of like this philosophical, like you know, storyline, which they threw away. Um, yeah. Ooh, there we go. They, yeah, they were handed the fucking world with this movie. And they just, yeah. They just threw it in the toilet. Would I go above the line of rewatchability? You know what? I'm. I'm I not... wouldn't complain if it was on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I would. There were. I. I wouldn't sit down and like intentionally put this on. But if I if it if it was on TV and like oh fuck I'll watch a couple minutes of this. Yeah. So I'm gonna go five point two five. Yeah. Because like normally I go five you know five or five five like. Yeah. So I'm I I want to put it slightly above the, the line of rewatchability, but yeah. not like a full like grading scale. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. It. Like I will watch this if somebody else has it on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna put it on myself. Um, and I don't like I wouldn't have a problem if it was on again. Like that would just not pay yeah. too close of attention. Yeah, I'm not seeking it out. But if it's on, hey, yeah, I'll check out a couple minutes. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for trivia? I just realized that he's using a famous monsters magazine to. Uh, oh, is that what that was? Yeah, yeah, to pop out the key and uh, catch it. Dope. <laughs> you know, Not to bother you with trivia. That would imply that, like. Someone, either Val Kilmer or like I'm trying to, uh, any other human, like besides from Doctor Moreau, would have br- had to have brought a copy of Famous Monsters with them. It's, I mean, to it, the island. <laughs> it feels like that would have been Val Kilmer's character. Yeah, because he's like maybe he just got it for the for the monster, like for his sons or something. Like you know, here you might like this. Kids like monsters. I doubt it. I don't know. I don't know. That's I don't know. But somebody had to have brought that there. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was probably Val Kilmer's Yeah. All right. So the original director, Richard, St- Richard Stanley. That's a whole story in itself. <laughs> spent four years developing the project only to be fired after four days. Uh, and then he went slightly insane. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually in the background of a couple of scenes. Yeah, 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 that's my next trivia fact. According to rumor, which is pretty well substantiated, actually, uh, after the studio fired uh, Richard Stanley, he convinced the makeup crew to turn him into one of the background mutants so he could keep tabs on the making of his dream project. He supposedly did not unmask himself until the rap party, in his, and in his autobiography, Val Kilmer mentioned Stanley would yell at him between takes in dogman makeup, and Kilmer would recognize his voice but not place him among any of the extras. <laughs> He's just standing out in the field, like throwing his voice, yeah, like, <laughs> to direct me, like to shadow direct the More movie. More emotion. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two steps to the right. <laughs> Woof. Uh, Marlon Brando wore a small radio receiver to help him remember his lines. Uh, co-star David Thewlis claimed. He'd be in the middle of a scene, and suddenly he'd be picking up a police message, and Marlon would repeat, there's a robbery at Woolworths. (laughs) 
All right. Yeah, this is this is Brando at his like just complete just craziest. Yeah, just gone. He's a lunatic. Yeah. And, like he was a lunatic in the 70s. And this lunatic has been like living on his own island for like yeah. decades now at this point. Like yeah. yeah. Much like the doctor in the movie. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh David Thewlis has stated he would like to give a real account of the film's production, but fears that it would, that if he did, he would never work again. Dave, come on. Now. Yeah, just tell us. I mean, maybe before like the year 2000 and like fucking yeah, four. Yeah, Frankenheimer's dead. Yeah. Fucking Val Kilmer's certainly not going to tell anybody. <laughs> he can't tell anybody anything. <laughs> Oh, throat cancer. Yeah, sorry, sorry. That was a bad one, sorry. Uh, he's kind of an asshole anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Val Kilmer described the shoot as crazy. Uh, Marlon Brando was still recovering from his daughter's suicide. Uh, the day production started, the French government set off an underwater atomic bomb near Tahiti where, Brandon, uh, where Brando owned an atoll. Uh, Kilmer turned on the TV and learned that he was getting divorced. Uh, two days later, the film studio fired director Richard Stanley due to their concerns over the film's direction. Uh, John Frankenheimer, who was hired to replace Stanley, clashed with Brando, Kilmer, and studio executives from start uh, from the start about the film's direction. And I believe we have Drunk Frankenstein calling in again. <laughs> uh oh Is this Drunk Frankenstein? Frankenstein. He hung up. Because he is, in fact, drunk. <laughs> and Frankenstein. Well, yeah. fr drunk Frankenstein, if you call back in, I will try to answer it on time. Uh, let's see. Actors playing Moreau's creations would spend hours in makeup only to find out that they weren't needed. At one oh, point, yeah. I'd be so pissed off. At one point, a day's filming was canceled when Marlon Brando and Val Kilmer each refused to come out of the trailer until the other did. <laughs> Drunk Frankenstein. Frankenstein. To accept, press one. To send a voice message. Did he call you collect? <laughs> Frankenstein ain't got no cell phone. <laughs> Frankenstein. Frankenstein love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Frankenstein. How much have you had to drink tonight? Pretty sure Frankenstein power power plant with ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> well, Frankenstein, what did you think of? Class it up, call it Everclear. <laughs> with eighty sword and sandals movies, they all cheap out on budget. And shooting modern day, but how come Terminator get free pass? <laughs> Frankenstein don't remember eating pair of Crocs. <laughs> He's not talking about the shoes either. No. <laughs> Frankenstein, what did you think of the island of Doctor Moreau? Island of Dr. Moreau Belong dead <laughs> <laughs> Yes it does Thank you for calling in Frankenstein <laughs> Love show Thank, <laughs> Thank you Frankenstein We love you too I don't know if it's the fusion powder talking But I fucking love that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Jesus Christ. Uh, Ron Perlman accepted his role so he could star with his idol, Marlon Brando. Uh, he was originally scheduled to shoot for three weeks and ended up staying for four and a half months when several of Val Kilmer's original lines were given to his character. Oh, fuck. Can you imagine the torture of having to be, like, in makeup... Probably for a good portion of that four and a half months. Oh, fuck yeah. In the middle of the fucking jungle every day. Like, yeah. oh, that would be miserable. No, thank you. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, the boat bringing the exotic animals to the set got caught in a hurricane. Uh, Richard Stanley stayed on the ship to ensure the animal's safety, and a restless puma urinated on him. Huh. It's probably that one at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. The one yeah. that was in the cage, yeah. Just like, can you imagine, just like, what smells like puma piss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the director. <laughs> Good. <It's> good. <laughs> Did somebody open a bottle of Tecate? <laughs> <laughs> That's panther piss. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference, buddy. <laughs> the first time I, I heard the expression, that smells like panther piss, yeah. I couldn't stop laughing <laughs> for like a good 10 or 15 minutes. And for the rest of the day, I just found myself going, panther piss. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> due to Marlon Brando's infamous large appetite and dislike Val Kilmer on set, he would request and eat large amounts of cabbage an hour before the scene started and would silently fart on purpose numerous times to leave what he described as a foul stench that would annoy Kilmer. Oh. <laughs> But at the same time, I respect the fucking game. Yeah. <laughs> like the pettiness of that. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. That's so fucking petty. <laughs> My cooling hat's off to you, <laughs> sir. Fucking. <laughs> the fucking ice bucket hat. It's caloric inverter. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it was really Fuck. just his hotel ice bucket. Yeah. <laughs> On his fucking head. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Uh, the actors playing Dr. Moreau's children spent most of their downtime engaging in alcohol, sex, drugs, and general debauchery, and I'm fucking here for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that orgy scene around fucking Val Kilmer in the, in yeah. the chapel. You guys are a bunch of animals. Oh, fuck, I didn't, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus you <Christ>. people. <laughs> Ooh. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> for a scene in which a dead beast woman gives birth to a mutant baby, Joey Orozco had sculpted a non-articulated uh, silicone form. Just prior to shooting the scene, John Frankenheimer decided he wanted the woman to be alive and convulsing throughout. So Shane Mahan and his team had only minutes to mechanize the prop, adding rods and joints and installing bladders under the skin all on the fly. Damn. Which a lot of people don't realize, like, the, the special effects people, like, their job is not done. Yeah, you don't like, just make Like, when they effect. make a yeah. thing and then just, like, ship it off. Like, they're constantly jerry-rigging every part of a fucking movie. Um, <laughs> Gary Oldman turned down the role of Montgomery uh, as he was in rehab at the time. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That will do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I know personally, if I again, if I were just out in the jungle for like four months, I would be crunked daily, <laughs> fucking relapse. Yeah, yeah. He would like he would be reliving the pill scene from fucking the professional. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fucking movie. It's so good. I love Mozart. <laughs> Fucking Gary Oldman. Yeah. This is the man. All right. This is our last uh, This is our last trivia fact for the evening here. Uh, the scene in which Dr. Moreau is killed and burned required a replica of Marlon Brando. When Brando didn't show up for his live casting session, uh, Shane Mahan called on Dick Smith, who had made a life cast of the actor for The Godfather. Dick Smith. <laughs> Dick Smith. Uh yeah, so they had to reuse his life cast from The Godfather. He <laughs> burn a Vito Corleone. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm gonna, like, that sounds like a rap term for smoking a blunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna use that from now or on. Or a really fine cigar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go burn a Vito Corleone. Mm. Damn it, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Are, are you done? I'm done. Oh, let's move on to the better known as. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we will start out as we always do. Well, well not as we always do, because this movie has two directors. Uh, 
one credited and one uncredited. Uh, but we'll start off with Jonathan Frankenheimer. John Frankenheimer. Sorry. Yeah. Um, He's got a cool ass name. Yeah. Frankenheimer. Uh, this dude's directed some shit, man. He uh, definitely a big name. The last uh, two things that probably got him any kind of note uh, were Reindeer Games with Ben Affleck in 2000 uh, and Ronin in 98 with De Niro. That was a badass movie. Uh, I have not seen that in a very long Jesus time. Jesus Christ. I don't think that I've seen that since it was new. Yeah. yeah I, had to, I had it on VHS. Did you? So, yeah, I would watch it every now and again. But, yeah, the, the car chases in that movie are like... Yeah, I remember, I remember like a lot of really good yeah. uh, vehicle shit. Uh, this was 96, The Island of Dr. Moreau. Uh, he directed an episode of Tales from the Crypt in 1992. Yeah. Uh, Maniac at Large... Uh, a, li- a mousy librarian overreacts to reports of a serial killer. I do not remember that. Blythe Danner was the uh, star of that. I don't... Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember that one. Once it starts getting into some of the later seasons, I I have a hard time remembering Yeah. Them. There's uh, somebody who was in, episode, in, season six, uh, in a season six episode that I don't remember also. Yeah. We'll get to that, though. Um... Other than that, he directed Black Sunday in 1977, which is a good movie. Uh, it's about like a terrorist attack on the Super Bowl uh, featuring Robert Shaw. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, he also directed uh, French Connection 2. Mm. Didn't he write the first French Connection, I believe? I don't know. I, he had something to do with it, I think. Uh, but he was the director of Did the, he direct it? No, he did not. Um, but I will say you should check out the French Connection. It's a fucking awesome movie. Motherfucking Popeye Doyle. Yeah, yeah. Gene Hackman is amazing. Uh, and again, amazing car chase uh, in that movie. Yeah. Um, let's see. He directed The Manchurian Candidate in 1962 uh, with Frank Sinatra, I believe. Uh, that was remade in like yes. the late 90s, early 2000s with Denzel Washington. Yes. Um, Birdman of Alcatraz, 62. Climax. <laughs> he climaxed twenty six times between nineteen fifty five and nineteen fifty six. Didn't we all back then? Mm. Didn't we all? Yeah. Uh, that's one every other week. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the dude who got the boot, Richard Stanley, uh, also a director of note. Man, he's he's directed some stuff you may have heard of. Not a and lot wrote. of great stuff. And wrote. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah he wrote a lot of stuff too. Um, most recently, the last thing he did was the Color Out of Space uh, film with Nicolas Cage. It mm-hmm. was 2019. Again, I dig that movie. It was it was good. I it, started it, but I never finished it. Yeah. Um, he's uh, working on something called Dunwich, which I'm assuming is another Lovecraft. I, it would uh, have to be. Yeah, uh, property. Well, we can check it out. Uh, probably the Dunwich Horror, yeah. Yeah. And the evil wizard, Waitley, makes a deal with a malevolent deity. Yeah. Definitely Lovecraft. For sure. Okay. Uh, Mostly because H.P. Lovecraft had a writing credit on that. Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> uh, aside from that... Boy, he directed Hardware in 1990, which was a Terminator ripoff. Mm-hmm. Well, he did a uh, Field of the Nephilim music video. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go, 1993. Yeah. Goth music for the win. <laughs> uh, we're going to move on. Up next, David Thewlis uh, was, uh, what's his name, Douglas? Yeah. Yeah. Arthur he, Douglas? Sure. <laughs> He's another dude who just like pops up in a lot of things. You've definitely seen him somewhere. Probably don't know his name. He recently played Hades uh, on that series Chaos on Netflix. Uh, heard that was good. Have not watched it. It does sound interesting. I don't know anything about it. Uh, it's about like like modern day story with like Greek gods. Okay. Uh, Jeff Goldblum, I think, plays Zeus. Oh, weird. Uh, let's see. Going back. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everybody has seen him in one set of movies. Yeah. Oh. We'll get there. Yeah. 
Uh, he is probably most, oh, well, yeah, maybe most well known for his recent uh, voice acting on uh, Big Mouth and Human Resources, um, playing the shame wizard uh, in both of those. <coughs> uh, it's right, he was Ares in Zack Snyder's Justice League, mm-hmm. which was a thing. Uh, I will say it Zach- was way too long, way too boring, way too not good uh still better than the fucking the two-hour movie that they made yeah i would rather watch the, his version over the the weed version um he was in the season of fargo that was 2017 uh he was like a like like slimy fucking underhanded fucking dude in that that was pretty cool yeah um did a version of Macbeth in 2015 was a voice on an episode of the family guy yeah uh he, that's the one yeah that's that's right I forgot about that he is probably most well known as Remus Lupin uh from the fucking uh Harry Potter movies yeah uh he was yeah the one of the professors uh in that he's the werewolf dude uh, yeah, that would, that that's why his name's Lupin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he played uh, Jennings in the Omen, the remake of the Omen in two thousand six. They changed his name. I just realized in the fucking seventies one, it's Haber Jennings because uh, we had to read the book in high school. And we always referred to him as Lightsaber Jennings, and it pissed <laughs> off our teacher. <laughs> so you make a, a movie in two thousand and six. Do you think you want to use a character named Haben? Haber. Haber. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, true. Uh, he was in Basic Instinct 2. Hey. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven in 2005, which somehow made... 7.3 on IMDb? Are yeah. you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I, I gotta disagree with that one. Uh, it's a, same that's made, about like, a four. Yeah, yeah, that movie was boring as fuck. Yeah. Uh, I was really And not excited. even in the good, like... This is a dramatic, like slow burn, kind of boring movie. No, no it, just, it was just, it was just fucking boring. Um, yeah, I was excited for that. Like, uh, fucking, you don't really get like movies set in the Crusades, like you know, fucking a yeah. war, you know, a war movie. Like, let's yeah. do it. And the, yeah, no, uh-huh. it was it was a piece of shit. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Oh, it's right. He's in the Big Lebowski. Uh, in 1998, he is one of Maud Lebowski's like artsy fartsy friends. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. That's right. He was in Dragonheart, also in 1996. I love that movie. He was the like poncy fucking bad guy in that, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was the one. He was the one that gets the fucking heart. Yeah, right. That gets the dragon heart. Uh, yeah. Um. He was in the uh, adaptation of James and the Giant Peach in 1996. It was Tim Burton, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, Produce? Maybe directed. I I think definitely produced. Yeah, I want to say directed. Let's see. Nope. Henry Selleck. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, it looks Burton as fuck. Uh, Let's see. Back to David Thewlis. Total Eclipse. Was that the werewolf cop movie? Excuse me, what? No. Full Eclipse is the name of that one. <laughs> there Still was, writing it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, like a 90s, I think it might have been an HBO original movie with Mario Van Peebles where he's like a werewolf like, oh. cop. Yeah, it was not good. Oh, you remember Solo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember Highlander 3? No. Oh. oh, gross. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We went through these already. Uh, yeah, David Thewlis is in a lot of shit. Or was at one point anyway. I think we're Mm -hmm. in his early career right now. Yep. Gonna move on. Gonna move on. Up next, Marlon Brando. I mean, acting legend. So you probably know him just for, you know, from being Marlon Brando. Yeah. uh, And being a weird motherfucker. Uh, I mean, he was Don Vito Corleone. That's probably the biggest role of anybody's career. 
Uh, he was Jor El in the uh, the good Superman movies, uh, Superman one and two. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was the voice in the Godfather video game too. Oh, Jesus really? Christ! Yikes! That's right. He was in the movie The Score with uh, it was De Niro and uh, is Devito in that one? Edward Norton. Which one was that? It's like a heist movie. Frank Oz directed it. What? Yeah. How many Muppets are in it? <laughs> Surprisingly zero. DeVito is not in this one. This is another heist movie. Mm. There were like two heist movies out at the same time. One of them was The Score. And DeVito, I want to say, was in the other one. Angela Bassett. Uh, all right. Going back. Was Danny DeVito in that one with fucking... Martin Lawrence. That is another. That's uh, like what's the worst that could happen, or something like that. Something. Like no, that. there was like another dramatic like heist movie like that. Yeah, okay. At the same time, I forget what it was. Um, I want to see maybe John Leguizamo was in it. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, let's see. Back to Brando. He was in Don Juan DeMarco with Johnny Depp. It was 1994, Columbus, The Discovery, 1992, uh, The Freshman, in 1990. That was with uh, Matthew Broderick and what's the other fucking person in that? Uh, Martin I think Brando. it might have just been the two of them. Yeah, Bruno Kirby is third build, so. Uh, it's crazy between fucking apocalypse now. Yeah, in, in like in the eighties, he does two movies in all of the eighties, um, and then yeah, yeah, one at the start, one at the end. Yeah, uh, but of course, nineteen seventy nine, probably his other most famous role, Apocalypse Now, Colonel Kurtz. Yeah, oh, right. I don't know, like, what was it Streetcar Named Desire? I think was the one that like really. Yeah, that's him. the one. That's probably where. I know, like, for me anyway, like, that was one of those things I knew as a cultural referent, a reference only because of Bugs Bunny. Like, for, for like yeah. cartoons. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I think it was, like, in a Bugs Bunny or Looney Tunes cartoon, somebody screaming Stella or, like, shit like... Simpsons. That, yeah, that's right. That's what it was, The Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. They did the... They did the a the streetcar music. named Marge. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> and Flanders played that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All comes back around to the Simpsons. Fight her off. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I think that was the first time you see that Flanders is fucking shredded. He's he takes off his shirt. And he's ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, sexy Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> the Godfather saga. I forgot that was a thing. Oh yeah, all of them in one. Yeah, edited together. They would play that like on Spike uh, yeah. every now and again. Yeah, all day. Yeah, because that's how long it takes. Yeah, dude, that's like watching the fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, Last Tango in Paris, from the butter anal sex scene, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't expecting that. Sorry. Oh, you want to run that by yeah. me one more time? <laughs> this is famous scene. Uh, there's a kids in the hall sketch about it. Uh, it was fucking Dave Foley and I think the other person's Mark uh, Mark McKinney. Like one of them playing playing a girl, and like I know Dave Foley is the guy. Yeah, but they're talking about like their you know his favorite movies, and like he keeps talking about movies with like famous anal sex scenes in them. Like yeah, it fucking. Uh, How many movies have famous like, anal sex? Like scenes? there's like Deliverance, uh, and like there's another one. Like I forget, but he just like. Uh, I forget what she's like. Oh, what's your favorite scene? He's like, I, oh, you know, I love Last Tango in Paris. It's like, oh, that's a very artsy movie. Like, what'd you say is your favorite part? He's like, oh, I don't know, probably the butter scene. <laughs> like, you fucking uh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, aside from oh, that, I mean, he was Mutiny and the Bounty. That was 1962. It's another one that uh, that's pretty well known. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure, like a lot of people, had to watch that in school at some point. Yeah, um, Guys and Dolls, nineteen fifty five, uh, on the waterfront, nineteen fifty four. I definitely had to watch that in school. Yeah. Um, oh, the wild one for sure. The wild one, Julius Caesar. Yeah, Streetcar Named Desire, nineteen fifty one. 
Uh, up next, Val Kilmer. Uh, Talk about a fucking hit and miss career. Yeah, he's in some solid movies and he's in some shit. Uh, he is just a weird dude in general. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like he is in some great fucking movies. Um, even Top Gun Maverick is a fucking good movie. Uh, oh, he was in it. Yeah, he he, he plays uh, Iceman. Yeah. Does he not have dialogue? No, he's retired. Like he's got uh, throat cancer. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I want to say like he speaks with, like a like a he types what he speaks if I remember correctly. Like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was in Jane Silent Bob reboot in 2019. Um, let's see. He was in the uh, Cars spinoff Planes that died quickly. Yep. Thank God. <laughs> uh, he's in a lot of shit towards. Oh, the, Kill uh, the Irishman was awesome. Kill the Irishman. I don't remember that. Oh, dude, you got to see that. Ray Stevenson, Christopher Walken, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. Right? For sure. Watch that fucking movie. All right. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Tough Irish thug working for mobsters in Cleveland in the 70s. Yeah. Sign me the fuck up. Uh, why did we go all the way the hell down here? I don't know. Jesus Christ. But I mean, you're in 2009. Yeah, so this like, is not going to be any of this. Like, I don't want to sell him short. He sold himself short. All right, fine. Jesus Christ. Besides, I caught up to where I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the MacGruber movie in 2010. Oh, whoopty fucking do. <laughs> I, like, I heard that's a hilarious movie. I can't bring myself to watch mm -hmm. it. Like, yeah. Can't do it. Cannot do it. Uh, Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, 2009. He, I forgot about this. He was the voice of Kit in the Knight Rider reboot in the or late, uh, early, you know, late aughts is what I'm trying Jesus. to say. Jesus. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. Oh, the love guru. That, that was good. Killed Mike Myers' career. <laughs> he played Moses in the Ten Commandments, the musical. Oh, Oh, buddy. Uh, he was in Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang in 2005, which is a great movie. Which one was that? Uh, it's the one with him and Robert Downey Jr. It's like a detective movie. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. It's a really good movie. What year was that? Uh, 2005, I think. Oh, that was when Robert Downey Jr. was making like fucking bangers. But, yeah. Like, nobody like, but nobody to, watched them. Yeah, he was trying to pull his career out of the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, because um, that's around the time he did. Um... Oh, fuck. Almost there. He had like a cameo scene as a producer in another movie. Uh, what the fuck was it? It doesn't matter. But anyway. Uh, let's see. Show us up on an episode of Entourage. Yeah, but didn't everybody? Yeah, uh, he's in the movie Wonderland in 2003, which is kind of a Boogie Nights knockoff, uh, but it's a it's about the, well, the that Wonderland one's, murder. That one's the actual story. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. Like, but I'm saying that wouldn't exist if Boogie Nights didn't. Probably not. Yeah, but, yeah. Because Boogie Nights was like the the funny version of yeah, and it, like not to say that Boogie Nights is a funny movie. What it is at certain parts compared to the Wonderland murder, it's a fucking lighthearted <laughs> romp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bunch of people got beat to death with pipes. <laughs> fucking yeah. Yep. Um, he was in the movie Red Planet in uh, two thousand. I remember Wasn't wanting that terrible. To like that. Yeah, I remember wanting to like it and then not. Oh, Pollock, great. Yeah, the uh, Pollock. That was two thousand. The movie about Jackson Pollock. I hate Jackson Pollock. Um, he's a bunch of there's a there's a theory that uh Jackson Pollock's paintings got popular because it was a CIA um like front really yeah because the, the, it, it was in the what the sixties so oh, Russia yeah, was yeah. Russia was beating us in everything especially the art scene yeah so they were like let's just put a bunch of money into this guy <laughs> and we'll be the best yeah make him popular yeah. 
Go America. Yep. Which makes total sense because his paintings are bullshit. <laughs> it's literally just flecks of paint. Yeah. Um, he was the voice of Moses in The Prince of Egypt in 1998. He's just on that Moses kick. Likes playing Moses. Yeah. Um, we've talked about The Ghost in the Darkness before. That was 1996. I really dig that movie. Oh, The Lions, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Saint. That was... The Saint, yeah. That was okay. I, uh, yeah. Eh, it was... It's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> that was 97. Uh, Heat, 1995. I mean, an all-time it's, fucking classic. Uh, it's fucking astounding. Like, yeah. not a Kilmer vehicle. And to be completely honest, like, that character could have been played by anybody. But it was cool to see it as Val Kilmer. Like, um, you, you didn't... You weren't used to seeing him as, like, a piece of shit scumbag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... He, like he got so like good at loading a fucking whatever I think it was like M sixteen or whatever they were fucking yeah AR fifteen in that movie that like military like it, training videos would show clips of him in that movie fucking load like reloading that weapon oh like, really that's how fucking good he got at it yeah <laughs> some John Wick shit yeah yeah uh, he was of course Batman in two. And one okay movie and one movie that murdered the franchise. Um, yeah. I thought he was Batman in just one of them. No, you're right. George Clooney, Clooney was Batman. Clooney did too. That's right. You're right. Uh, okay, then he was yeah. Batman in an okay movie. Yeah, Good on you, Val. Uh, like Batman on Broadway movies. Like I loved them when I was a kid. I went back for them, and I just... No, they're, I they're so Batman goofy. Forever. I liked Batman and Robin. I just remember like, what the fuck did we uh, well, just watch? Like when I saw them, like the age I saw them, I was like, I was prime target, mm. and they were flashy and colorful, and like they had cool scenes and shit like that. So like, I was all about them, and then I went back for them like later. I was like, wow, what the fuck was I thinking? Fuck Schumacher. <laughs> Uh, he is in True Romance in 1993. Whoa. Slow oh, your shit. roll. Yeah, Slow your sorry. fucking roll. That was not intentional. He is in, of course, the one of the greatest movies ever fucking made uh, in 1993, of uh, course. I was right. Yeah. Uh, Tombstone. He is Doc Holliday. Oh, my God. I had that poster on my wall. Uh, yeah, when I fucking... God, I love that movie. It's fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got the cough drop in, folks. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, My bad. Yeah. I wasn't to... taking up space. Yeah, yeah. Let it ruminate in your mouth. <laughs> uh, he, of course, played Jim Morrison in 1991. And it could be argued he played Jim Morrison in a couple other movies after that. <laughs> uh, this one being. He one did it them. really, really well, though. <laughs> like, he. Like when he went and played Jim Morrison, he went completely fucking method. Oh, like I just wanted to punch him in the face in that movie. So. He learned every fucking Doors song. I'm Jim. Yeah. Oh fuck you, dude. <laughs> That's how he was though. Like yeah, he really oh, I fucking to punch nailed Jim Morrison in the face <laughs> too. Yeah. <laughs> Where you drunk fuck? <laughs> uh, he was of course Mad Mardigan in Willow, 1988. So good. <sighs> yeah. So good. You know what's uh, really sucked though was the Nintendo game. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, the game was fucking hard because it was dude. like kind of like a role playing game, but like kind of like if I remember correctly, you it to, like... was it was a weird. Yeah, like do you remember Fester's Quest? Yep. Kind of like that. Kind of like an action RPG ish almost. Like, yeah. 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 Like, uh, like a Zelda two. Yep. If you will. Yeah. Uh, Top Gun, of course, 1986. He was Iceman. Uh, Real Genius, 1985, which I, is a great Oh, comedy. shit, they were back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Um, Real Genius was in 85, and his first role in 84 in Top Secret, which is another, like, underrated comedy. Yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> it's a really good one. I haven't seen that in forever. But... Yeah. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Up next, we have Feruza Balk. Again, 90s Chris just dug for who's a bulk. Yeah. I've watched The Craft a lot. <laughs> um, Not really, like, in stuff lately of note. And she did show up in The Craft reboot in 2020 uh, as her character from the original movie. Oof. I think one of the girls is, like, her daughter or something. 
Um, she was in Ray Donovan for a bit for seven episodes of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Port of Call New, uh, Bad Lieutenant Port of Call New Orleans shows up again. Is that Nick Cage? Yeah, 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 it was. She was in an episode of Masters of Horror in 2006. Oh, shit. Who directed that one? Uh, let's take a look. Season one. It's got to be a biggie. Uh, Larry Cohen. Goddamn. Yeah, written by Mick Garris. Oh, sweet. Uh, let's see. She was in a just a two episodes of the Justice League. She's a voice in Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, she was in Deuces Wild in 2002 with uh, is it fucking Stephen Dorff. Ugh. It's in the fifties, like doo wop gangsters movie. Uh. <laughs> She's an almost famous fucking Stephen Dorf. <laughs> no wait, that's Stephen Dorf. Hold on, it's not Stephen Dorf. It's the other guy who looks like him. No, it is Stephen Dorf. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Never mind. I was right. Or Dorf on sports. <laughs> Dorf on golf. <laughs> Uh, for you people who are not old, yeah, uh, Dorf was a it was Tim Conway, yeah, yeah okay. on his knees, pretending to be a midget, doing sports for the laughs. Yeah, I only know that because in <laughs> seventh grade, our uh, our science teacher showed us like a Dorf on golf video. Oh, really? Like to teach physics or some. I remember reason. watching. I think he just liked golf and wanted to show something with Oof. golf in it. Because they, they, they would have commercials for the, the VHS tapes to order. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I also remember seeing them in Woolworths. <laughs> I was a kid. It was, it was Ray. It was not Ray. Yeah, Ray Stevens. The guy who sang The Streak. Yeah. You can only get those videos. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You get to call away for our uh... Oh man, fuck! It feels so bad to be able to say like, "Oh, I saw that in Woolworth." Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I bought the original Castlevania in Woolworth when I was a kid. Did you? My grandmother bought it for me. It was mm-hmm. twenty dollars. What? Yeah. That's Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was uh, the love interest in The Water Boy in nineteen ninety eight. Your grandmother. Yeah, she was. Oh. She had a hell of an acting career. Uh, no, uh, Feruza Balk. Yeah. Uh, Vicky, Vicky Valancourt. Yeah. She showed me her boobies. <laughs> uh, American History X. Yeah, uh, I went over that. Sorry. Yeah, that, is a, that is a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. That was 1998. Pretty <sighs> heavy movie. So fucking heavy. Yeah. That movie is almost... It's... Yeah, over 25 years old, almost 30 years old. Oof. That feels gross. Yeah, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course, we mentioned uh, The Craft earlier, 1996. Yeah. Oh, this was after The Craft. God damn. Yeah. This is the only re- that was one of the main reasons I saw this movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, She's in Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. That was 1995. Uh, that was Andy Garcia, like another gangster movie. That was really good. Mm-hmm. All right, hold on. I'm going to put this cough drop out of its misery. <laughs> um, that's pro- oh no wait there's like one more thing she was in that's notable uh, she was Dorothy in Return to Oz in 1985 oh Jesus which is a nightmare of a fucking it's movie it's so fucking scary mm-hmm. like unintentionally scary uh, sorry up next Tamura Morrison he is most well known as uh, both Django and Boba Fett uh, in the uh, Star Wars movies. Oh shit! And the TV shows, of course. Uh-huh. Uh, he is also Aquaman's dad uh, in the DC, uh, the now defunct DC universe uh, movies. Um. Other than that, I think he shows up here and there in a couple other like. Like, oh, I didn't know he was in that. Yeah. So now we have to go through this. Oh, Moana. There's a sequel to Hard Target. Oh, no. No, there isn't. No, there is not. (laughs) No, the fuck there isn't. Uh, Yeah, I believe he's Moana's dad in Moana. Yes, Chief Tui. Um, 
He's in the Scorpion King 3. He uh, is in the Green Lantern movie in 2011. Uh, he plays the Green Lantern that uh, gives his ring to Hal Jordan. Yeah. A lot of Boba Fett credits. Yeah. I mean, at least they're good about, like, bringing the same people back to reprise the character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was in From Dust Till Dawn 3, 1999. Mm -mm. Uh, six Days, Seven Nights in 98. Go back up, please. Okay. Hangman's daughter. All right. Yeah, he was the Hangman. Huh. Uh, he's in Speed 2. Nope. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah, nope. Uh, he is in Barbed Wire in 1996. Wah. Uh, and that might be it for like the known stuff. Yeah. They went back and actually added his voice as Boba Fett uh, to Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Yeah. Uh, Anything to just like fuck with an old movie. <laughs> uh, Nelson De La Rosa was the little uh, mini me, uh, Dr. Moreau. Uh, he really wasn't in anything else of note. Uh, I just wanted to no. save him because he well would, he was famous for being the world's smallest man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would show up on uh, on Super Sabado Gigante on on the Spanish <laughs> channel like on, on Saturday afternoons like every now and again. They would just have him like a little karate gi like doing karate moves and stuff. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only reason I know that is because we would watch it before Caliente came on. Because right I would afterwards. watch Univision all day. <laughs> no, I would watch Caliente for sure. Uh, uh, if anybody's not familiar with Caliente, uh, I am sure uh, that there are videos on YouTube of old episodes of Caliente. Spicy. Spicy. Yeah, yeah. Steamy, <laughs> even. Steamy. Uh, it was just a Spanish, it was a dance show on the Spanish channel. It was like Club yeah. MTV. Yep. Um, but man, did those girls get into it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a comedian. Um, oh, Christ. I can't believe I don't remember his name. Um, but he went to prison for a while and he's t he talks about in prison He's like, there was one time that you could not change the channel. Yeah. If you changed the channel when Caliente was on, you would get the shit kicked out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why the fuck would you? Again, those 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 dancers were very talented. <laughs> I, I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but let's just say somebody else we know would record episodes of Caliente <laughs> on a VHS cassette like, and like just have like volumes of Caliente. Somebody we know? Somebody we know. Was it Tom? I. It's not... It, I'm not going to say who it was, but it's somebody we know. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tom. <laughs> I'm not saying who it was. <laughs> on air. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, Peter Elliott. I have saved him for one reason, because we have actually talked about him before. There are two highlight clips on our Twitch channel. Yeah. One of them is Donner knocking over a light and almost hitting you with it. Yeah. The other one is us talking about oh Peter Elliott. Oh, my God. Elliot. The monkey man? Pete plays a lot of monkeys. Yes! <laughs> I, I was like, I was, I'm like Peter Elliot. I'm like, okay, I'm going through it. I'm like, this dude plays a lot of monkeys, man. Like, what is this guy's name? Pete? And I scroll back up. I'm like, yeah, oh, we talked about this fucking guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pete plays a lot of monkeys. Yeah, no, he's the monkey guy. I forgot what episode that was. That was. Well, oh, it had to be like one of the Apes, Apes movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, we we talked about him. So you can go check out that clip of us talking about Pete and everything Jesus he's been in. Jesus Christ. Uh, up next, Mark DeCascos. Are you shitting me right now? He was one of the animal men. Get ready, Art, because we need two sound clips ready to go. I, we've talked about Mark DeCascos before. I think we have. We yeah. had to have. He's, he's in Brotherhood of the Wolf. That's right. That's yeah. the one he's in. But he also inspired two clips on our soundboard. Uh, take it away, Art, if you know which ones I'm talking about. Because he was the he was the oh, Iron Chef. Oh, shit. Yeah, he was the Iron Chef in the American version of the Iron <laughs> Bia! Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about those. Oh, we gotta find more reasons to use those. <laughs> oh wait, I'm gonna go get one of those right now. I'm gonna go get a. Oh well, I moved on page. Oh. Bia! <laughs> get me one of those as well. You got it. Bia! There we go. Oh. Tickle my ass with a feather here a little bitch. bit. That's the one. What's up? We're drinking Jaws beer. Hell yeah. Little Narragansett. 
What do you think about the hairy trout? <laughs> that was from that episode. It was. That's right. That's I'm right. over here reminiscing. <laughs> what, what do you think about that uh, hairy trout? <laughs> Uh, all right, so we're going to move on past Mark Tacascos. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's an action star. Oh, we love him. He's great. Yeah. We we just love the Iron Chef clips. Uh, up next, who we have also talked about Holy before. shit, that is ice cold. Yeah. Oh, mine's fizzing up. It's so ice cold. Yeah. Ron Perlman. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Ron Perlman, fucking awesome in everything. Um, He's Hellboy. You know, we've talked about him there. We talked about him in uh, Pacific Rim. He's awesome. We love him. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. <laughs> For real. Book Ron Perlman. Get Ron Perlman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Book Ron Perlman. Neil Young was in this movie. No, not, not that the, one. Not the singer of Neil Young. Just some yeah. dude named Neil Young. I just wanted to make that joke. He wasn't in anything of note. <laughs> Last up. What the fuck? William Hootkins is in this I movie. I love him. He's Porkins in fucking Star Wars. <laughs> Porkins? Porkins? You named the fat guy Porkins? Yeah. <laughs> so there's two Star Wars characters in this. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Porkins and uh, Boba Fett. Uh, he was also in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He is Lieutenant Eckhart in Batman. That scene Holy like, shit. traumatized the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. Eckhart, think about the future. And he sticks the pen in his throat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, but yeah, no. Porkins. Oh, shit. He's, I mean, he's done a, a bunch of other stuff. He was a voice in the Justice League cartoon. He's a voice in uh, Evil Dead, A Fistful of Boomstick, the video game. Oof. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up there. Yeah, he was the Loch Ness monster and ah, real monsters. Dope. <laughs> That'll do it for the better known as under the crapshoot. No one. Uh, no murder she wrote. That's the first. No, no murder she wrote. But also, no Frank Welker. Oh no, that's right. I'm sorry, I forgot. He was one of the voices. Oh shit. He was the voice of Assassin. Uh, the Frank Welker guys pointed that out on Instagram earlier today. Yeah, I, I saw. I saw that. that, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that, and then I didn't see him in the in the list because he's, he's not in the top. I only go from the top people here, the top cast. Oh, to one of the time saving measures that we uh, <laughs> we employ. Uh, All right. So Frank Welker was in it. Yeah. No. Shout out to the Frank Welker Wonder Hour guys for pointing that out to us. It's been a while. Yeah. I miss those sons of bitches. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, it was a week. I still got some shit in though. Yeah. Um. Saw the new Joker. Definitely not as good as the first Joker, but I enjoyed the fucking shit out of it. I thought it was a good movie. My buddy told me he hated it. I can see why people hate it. One hundred percent. But he knew it was like a musical going in it and is, all that shit. Yeah, one hundred percent. A fuck you to all of like the bro fanboys who like dig the Joker. Like, yeah, you know the first movie and just the character of the Joker. Like, yeah, like the guys that get the fucking Joker smile tattooed yeah. here. It is one hundred percent a yeah. fuck you to those guys. Um, because like I'm trying not to get too spoilery with it. Yeah, it really like you know the first movie like create you know idolized the Joker and this one like cuts the fucking legs out out of, out of the idol. Yeah. So I can see why people don't like it. Um, well, the first one, I shamefully still haven't seen the first one. Um, I was almost going to suggest maybe we do it as like, you know, because I mean, he is a monster fucking. Yeah. Um, but like the thing was, it's just kind of to humanize the character for once, right? Like, like make him a flawed man instead of a maniacal fucking weirdo yes it is a character study it is a character yeah. study of like a it's person, like mental illness yeah of this of the person who would put on the makeup and yeah. i think because like with the first movie you're you're working under so many assumptions of like what this person is going to become mm -hmm. and then like the second movie kind of takes it away from you yeah um so i think that's why people are pissed off if you can separate that, like, you know, the character, the Joker, you know, and just separate this movie, just having it stand on its own as, as a movie, as a piece of film. Yeah. 
I think you can enjoy it a lot more because it continues that character study of the first movie of like this mentally ill person wouldn't become this huge fucking mastermind because he's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like he is just a nobody who like found a crack in the system and got a bunch of notoriety because of it, because he did something so extreme. Yeah. Um, they're like the first movie ends in this moment of such fucking shock and like just like because you know something is coming in the final scene you don't know what it is yeah and you're wrestling with like i know when i was watching it like okay you know the joker's on a talk show i'm thinking like it's gonna be like the dark knight you know returns like somehow everybody in this fucking studio is gonna die right um but it's 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 realistic it's not it's not that (laughs) <laughs> and when what happens does happen you're just like oh fuck like oh oh yeah um and, and it, it doesn't have that same moment in this movie where it is like holy fuck yeah um but i thought lady gaga was fucking awesome she just knocks that character out of the park yeah of like someone who is also crazy like again it cuts out the heart of this like Oh, you know, these this they're not this couple that like people idolize, which they shouldn't be. No. They're abusive. Yeah. Like it's a realistic version of what these two mentally ill people like, yeah. would be if they got together. Yeah, they're not cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're um, fucking damaged. Yeah. 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 So it, it like and I think like what a, what ends up happening with her character is perfect for that fucking character. Yeah. Because again, it's realistic. If these people, like, again, they're just idolized as like this. Yo, know, they're so in love with each other, and like it's this burning passion. And no, they're, they're two fucking it's crazy just, people. It's just that they're o- the only two people that would deal with the <laughs> other one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like, I, I'm trying, so I'm trying so hard not to spoil the yeah. ending. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. Of like. I think I'm why gonna, she does what she does. In this I think movie. I'm gonna make it a point to watch the first, at least the first one this week, because like I've wanted to watch it since it came out. I just it never find really myself in that good mood movie. for because I know it's fucking heavy. Yeah, I've never just really found myself in that mood to watch the thing. Yeah, you know I ended I mean? up watching it like on a like just a whim Saturday night. We got back from like hanging out with a bunch of friends and I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm going to put on like a few minutes of it because I wanted to watch it again. Yeah. Like I'll start it now and like finish it maybe tomorrow. I ended up just watching the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the first one? Yeah. 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 Um, But yeah, no, I like the musical aspect is obviously going to piss people off. Yeah. And it's not like, I wouldn't say it's like a hardcore musical. Like there are. Parts- I would assume it's like when they're in some sort of like delirium. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um. There, this is non uh, mild spoiler, mild spoiler, very mild spoiler. Um, because it's a meta, like a meta spoiler. One thing I noticed, um, that they kind of they hit you over the head with it at the beginning, yeah. But like, the a lot of the movie centers around is he really two people? Is he really this meek, like weakling? who you know has the split personality of this like criminal like you know genius this charismatic you know entity yeah or is he just a dude like who's crazy um and it goes and it goes back and forth between like the you know the you know, what what it could be yeah but one thing i did notice they they actually i noticed it actually in the when i went and re- rewatched the first movie they introduced it at the end when he is supposedly in like the Joker like persona, he is lit like with a yellow glow. Yeah. Um, it happens at the end of the first movie, at the very end. Like they show him like as he's walking like off camera at the end. There's just like a yellow kind of like golden like glow about him. Yeah. And they show it again at the beginning of the first movie, and that's like your cue for like the rest of the movie. When he is, quote unquote, the Joker, he's lit that way. When he's Arthur, everything is dull and like dim. Um, I mean, that makes sense. And I thought it was very interesting that whenever he is talking to Harley, he is Arthur. He is not the Joker. Okay. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. That's subtle. Yeah. It's, I guess it's very subtle, but I'm like, "Uh aha. Like he has found the person he thinks he can be himself with. 
Yeah. Like, and that, that yeah, like you, you kind of need to, it's like a, a subtext thing. So, yeah, I, I dug that. I thought that was cool. All right. Yeah. I do want to see both of those, but. Yeah. And like, even some of the, the like, the delirium sequences, like, the fucking musical numbers are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's fucking Lady, Lady Gaga. Like, yeah, yeah. There, there's like, there's two in particular. There's like one where they're, they're singing like a duet and like, they're like he they're they're kind of like imagining it as like a, it's in the it's in the trailer so I'm not giving anything away yeah like a '60s like kind of like variety show, um and that was a good song, and then there's one where like they're in like a nightclub act it's the nightclub where he's the comedian in the first movie actually I realized, um and like she's playing the piano and she's fu- like it's a fucking awesome song yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 I mean like love her songs or hate her songs she's a hell of a musician fucking yeah. sing yeah, like, yeah there's no question about that um. I no Jesus Christ I don't I don't think I've watched anything since last week uh I didn't watch this most recent episode of Tulsa King I was, oh, I was I, kind of busy on Sunday oh I always get to that <laughs> I wasn't even busy which yeah. is like I was just spending time with my son so I was like I'm not gonna watch Tulsa King with a 10 year old <laughs> oh um, god I love that stupid show yeah <laughs> yeah, I I was describing it to my buddy at work, and I was like, "It's like a twelve year old and a sixty five year old went. You gonna be fucking cool?" <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote down everything that they thought would be cool. Yeah, yeah. There again, non spoilery. There is a scene where Stallone is high on like weed lollipops. Yeah. In the new episode, and he's just being a douchebag to Martin Starr. <laughs> God, I love this fucking stupid show. Yeah. So bad, but I can't stop watching. It's just fun. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. That's what it is. TV is not fun anymore. Yeah. And that's what it's makes it so fucking special. Fun. <laughs> um, there, I was talking to you about grotesquerie last week, right? I keep hearing how fucking awesome this Dude, is. It's so fucking dope. Shit, I gotta watch this goddamn show now. Dude, like... Again, like there was an episode that came out last. So there's, I think there's four episodes out now. I've only seen three. Okay. Same with Tulsa King. But like, fucking up to now, loving it. It, I'm going to say one of the best shows on Fuck TV you, right now. Ryan Murphy. Every time you, I think I'm out, you fucking pull me back in. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Dude, it's, it's fucking dope. All right. It's so. I don't know. It's like the tension on everything is fucking palpable. Like, I love it. Yeah. And, and when the things pay off, they pay off in a big way. <laughs> like, All right. Loving it. Shit. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to fucking thank me when you watch it, too. I, I keep hearing about how good this show is. Yeah. I didn't I, know. Like, any- I still can't believe it. I didn't know anything about it until I was flipping I through. I still don't. Yeah. Dude, I'm just like, why isn't this a season of American Horror Story? Like, why is it a different show? Like, so I don't know anything about it. Because it's its own thing. Like, All it's right. totally its own thing. It doesn't feel like American Horror Story. Good, because it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, I didn't even know it was a show until I saw it advertised on like fucking Hulu or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you caught me with the title. And then I read the description. I was like, okay, cool. Like, detective story, Niecy Nash, fucking... All right. All right, I'll give Ryan Murphy a fucking shot. But, like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fucking watch it. Motherfucker. Uh-huh. Yeah. Make that your mission for this week. All right, I'll I'll get into it. Um, Speaking of other shows I am hooked on, uh, I watched season... Or, season three. Episode three of The Penguin yesterday. That show is... Perfection. Gotham Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. I, I I know it's supposed to be a limited series. You guys need to make more. I don't even need more Batman. Fucking and like, make more Penguin. Like, I want more of this. Like, I don't even need specifically more Penguin. I need more of th- like this. this. Yeah, the Gotham like crime world. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause it's so fucking rich. Like, yeah, they spent. 70 years building what Gotham is. Yeah. And you're going to focus on Batman and the Joker. Are you fucking kidding me? I, I, again, I I never want to see Batman in this fucking show. No, not... A, uh, whew, shadow. 
or just like holy people like, talking about him. That's yeah, like, like yeah, like there's something like they're waiting to happen, and like the next scene, like fuck, like the Batman showed yeah. up. Like yeah, I do not need Batman in this. Yeah, I absolutely do not need the Joker in this. Yeah, no. Like I want more. Stay away. Colin Farrell and Kristen Milioti, like they I mean, are fucking yeah. amazing in this yeah. show. I need street level shit. That's yeah. why Daredevil was so fucking good. Yeah, I am so hyped for Born Again. Like, I know they're gonna nail it just because of how long they've been like working it and reworking it. Like, is this an, like another show, like a yeah. limited series? It's gonna be like it's like a, it's long. It's like fifteen or sixteen episodes. I oh think. fuck yeah yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I I, I am. You like seriously, guys. You cannot limit this to one season. It is, it is so rich for storytelling. And yeah. Like, well, the problem uh, is like, it's Colin Farrell money. Yeah, they're not. They're not. I mean, like, they can't have Colin Farrell on a TV show. They can't year. just. You can't tie him up. Yeah. Like, he's got to do movies and shit. Like, even though he doesn't, he, he doesn't seem to be doing a lot of like huge budget shit anymore. Like. The independent stuff that he does is really good. Yeah, he's he's go, he's a, he literally went from being like a joke to being like a fucking serious actor in like a lot of good movies. Well, like, yeah, because look at what he was in in uh, in Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah, just fucking terrible. To I want to say he did In Bruges shortly thereafter. I yeah, that's when he that's when he did like the turnaround. Like In Bruges was like, well, wait a minute, this guy is actually good. Like, yeah, he yeah. can do shit. And that movie fucking rules. That is a really good movie, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, let's see. Never started answer. reading my next... Uh, it is a really good beer. Started reading my next comedy book. Really digging that. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Comedy on the Edge, it's called. Uh, it's just about, like, comedy in the 70s. So, like, the... Um, oh, where they were, like, dangerous? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so far, I think it's going to be like one chapter dedicated to like a certain comedian. Yeah. So like I'm on the Carlin chapter right now, which is it's amazingly good. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff I did not know about George Carlin in there. It, it's really, really good. Do you ever read any of his books? Yeah. Oh yeah, I read Brain Droppings. Um, that might be the only one. Oh yeah, I remember. Oh no, that. his autobiography is really good. Really? Yeah. Last words. Fuck. No, yeah. That's on the goddamn list. Uh, I have it. I can let you borrow it. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. No, no, it's not one of his comedy books. Cause it, no, it's about him. His, his life story is not a comedy. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. His, uh, his comedy books are, I mean, you're just reading his stand-up Bits of specials. his act, yeah. And, which is fine. Like, it, that's a good, like, I want to pick this up and put it down kind of book. It's a crapper book, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because I had, uh, I had, uh, when will Jesus bring the pork chops? I think. <laughs> and, and I was reading, and I was like, oh, this is, I recognize these yeah. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was fine. Um, but no, like, I, the, it talks about, like, his early career, like, how. Oh, he was, well, he was a straight man. Or not straight yeah, man, well, it talks but he was about straight laced. It talks about Carlin and Burns. It talks about how he, like, came about to making that change to becoming. Yeah. Like a different, you know, George Carlin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I, have you ever seen any of his like old stuff? Like when he was on the the, yeah, like, the he was black like, and white Carson. Yeah, he was like a family like comedian basically. Like yeah. Um, when he was the hippy dippy weatherman, and he was making like a solid living doing that. He was I, he like they were talking with his manager in the book, and he's saying like I, I'm the guy who took George Carlin from making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to fifteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah. But like still for the better, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because that extended his career, yeah, yeah. by a lifetime. Is it if because if he stayed on the course, he would have wound up being like it'd just be one of those little, like oh, do you ever remember this comedian? Like he would have he would have had a Vegas career, yeah, you know, like yeah, he would have been a cultural icon. But it talks about like when he was getting bored with that shit, like he was he had a week of dates like at the Copa. Yeah, and like the uh, the guy who owned the Copa was like notorious for just like sitting in the crowd and like like yelling shit out and like you know if you suck you'd cut your engagement short. So like, oh really? Yeah, you got into a thing with that guy. Um, he was like booked in Vegas and like got into a thing with like the people who had him booked there. Like it yeah. was it's really interesting. Yeah, um, I assume the first chapter was probably prior. No, Carlin's the first. I'm still. Oh, it, really? It uh, it it it's deceptively short looking. It only looks like it's two hundred and twenty something pages. Yeah. 
but the size of the book is larger than like a typical book and oh, okay. the, the print is small. Oh, so like yeah. normally I could knock out like 20 pages on my lunch break at work. Yeah. Whereas this, I'm maybe I can get through like five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, still really, really good though. I, I enjoy the hell out of that book. Yeah. Uh, other than that, not much. Yeah. I don't think I've watched anything. I, I'm, I'm slowly plugging away on Hannibal. Yeah. I'm in right. season two now. Um, all right. Season two takes a little bit of a dip, like n- not so much quality, but like interest wise. Yeah, yeah. Because like season one was fucking fascinating. Season two is like, I had the cats out of the bag. Yeah, yeah. Is that it, like they start like going through like? Because I want to say they go through like Red Dragon at one point. Uh, season two is where uh, Hannibal is on the outside, but then. Why am I blanking his name? Will Will is the one. Like, he's yeah. in jail now. Yeah, um, they, they think he's a killer. Right? Yeah, yeah, they think yeah. he was. He was the one. He was the copycat. Um, and you're seeing all this stuff that like Hannibal had set up. So like you see him like put him under anesthesia and put a tube down his throat and then shove that ear down into his stomach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can throw it up later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's cool. It's all rad, but, like, like the mystery part of it is is gone now, because for a little while, you're like, oh, is Hannibal doing that shit yet? Because you know he's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, is he doing it yet? Is that Hannibal? Like, what's he doing? And then obviously by the end of season one, you know that, yeah, he is the one doing it all. But, like, there's not that like intensity anymore. I do like how season two starts though, because it's like um, it's Hannibal and uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character, like oh yeah, fucking uh, trying to Crawford. kill each Jack Crawford, Crawford yeah. Jack Crawford trying to kill each other, yeah, like at dinner, yeah. So I was like, all right, and then it's like twelve weeks earlier. I was like, oh, okay, so now I've got a timeline, but. Yeah, it's still fucking solid. Like I'm I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. It's just like I think the fervor of like, oh, I got to watch another episode. I got to watch another episode is kind of over. They're trying to uh get another season going, it sounds like. Both fucking uh Hugh Dancy and what's his name there are both in for it. Mads Mikkelsen? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like I like his lecture. I don't love it. I dig it. He's dig it. he's very like He's very cold. And that's like Mads Mikkelsen just kind of plays everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's, yeah, he's got his own flavor for it. So I, I do appreciate that. But like, I don't know, like the the charisma isn't really, like, not to say Mads Mikkelsen isn't charismatic because he is. You, you you're always watching him on screen. But like, he's not giving that character the charisma that I think he needs. I never watched Bates Motel. Um, I didn't either, but I heard it was decent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else? Probably not. I don't know. Yeah, we've been talking a while. Have we? Oh, yeah. Oh, about 40, yeah. Hour and a half, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I think I'm. I think I'm tapped out on media. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna make a point to to watch the Joker this week. I promise to watch the Joker if you promise to watch Grotesquery. Fuck. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I should be able to. I, it's a relatively slow week. Got the defenestration hour this week. We're doing the Expendables Friday night. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Is it all the fucking Stallone you can handle this week, huh? Oh God. Of Tulsa King, I, st- I cannot believe I cannot convince Tom to watch that show. Are you shitting me? It'd be I, right up his fucking alley. He, exactly. Yeah, he's just contrarian. Like if you tell oh. him the way he's gonna like something, he intentionally won't watch it. Like, but like I'm, I just I keep trying to like, dude, you are going to love this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you love, oh, I don't have time to watch a bad. Show. You don't have time to watch bad stuff. Like, dude, you can watch. Like you are going to love it. Like, What's he doing with his day? 
<laughs> I mean, he's not like he's not busy, but he watches a lot of bad stuff. Like yeah. fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, all 24 hours are taken up. Yeah. No, you can spare an hour. <sighs> Just from fucking... the amount of times we've watched Cobra, <laughs> like I know you're going to love this movie. <laughs> There's nothing in it that he wouldn't love. Yeah, horrible Stallone acting. Horrible uh, Stallone acting. Yeah, weed. <laughs> Mafia drama. Yeah, ridiculous, over the top bullshit. Yeah. Oh God, I fucking. <laughs> this show is so good. It's perfect. It's... It is the perfect dipshit TV. Yeah, like, I, yeah, because like you said, it's just fun. I can put this on. I know I'm not going to need to figure out what's happening. No. Like, I'm not going to unravel a mystery. There's no high drama. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, is Stallone going to punch that guy, yeah. or is the guy from the wrestling documentary that I watched a couple years ago going to punch that guy? <laughs> Bigfoot, that character. Oh, he was in a. He was in, was it Netflix documentary called The Wrestlers or whatever about OVW? It's Not familiar. OVW is the wrestling uh, territory, I guess, that like Al Snow is in charge of these oh, days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like one of the last like independents that is still like mildly successful. Well, the guy who plays Bigfoot was a wrestler in that franchise all right yeah um speaking of wrestling i am well into the mr mcmahon documentary it's yeah. really good is it yeah i i am enjoying it is he finding out just how much of a scumbag he is well a lot of it i mean like so if you I, or at I least feel how like, fucking intense he is yeah we're like we're getting there it's it's a lot i mean it takes it from the beginning of like him working with his dad to like him taking over and then like oh back in the wwwf yeah it goes through like the whole like 80s era like how you know he worked with hulk hogan and like how like yeah they just made hogan this huge like cultural phenomenon and like yep. i mean it's it brings out so much nostalgia like watching it for me anyway like oh, i was so into wrestling when i was a kid oh, yeah. like um I mean, there's a whole big thing about like the Montreal screw job with like Henry yeah. Bret Hart. They cover the the uh, the steroids trial. Yeah, they cover yeah. the steroids trial. I mean, it talks about everything. Yeah. Um. Uh, I just finished up the one. This was like when I got out of wrestling, like for the last time. Like I was in high school. It was like the Bret Hart, uh, not Bret Hart. Um, Shawn Michaels like Stone Cold Steve Austin match at WrestleMania. Yeah. And they were talking about how like it just people were like completely just tuning out at that point. Like it's just a horrible fucking match they were saying like Yeah. I remember like watching that at, at Evil Geeks Nick's house, uh, Evil yeah. Geeks Nick's whatever, his house. Yeah. Uh you know for his birthday we were all like was it was his birthday. I don't remember. We were all held, like huddled around watching WrestleMania at his house. Yeah. So it couldn't have been his birthday. His birthday's in December. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's so good. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. What um, is that on? Netflix. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe I'll check it out. I, like, um, I, I it love... really goes into like the whole like WCW thing, like them, like yeah. you know, the whole like NWO. The, the, the Monday Night Wars. Yeah. 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 I love watching shit about wrestling. Like, yeah. Uh, all the Dark Side of the Ring episodes I've seen. Like, I yeah. want to say they're actually. There's a sixth season out, but it's not on like Hulu, so you can't. I can't watch uh, it. Possibly, uh, it's pretty, yeah, probably on some streaming service. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I the I'm Vice really Channel or that. whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I think I have two episodes left, and like I, I don't, I, like I almost don't want to finish it because I don't yeah. want it to be over. Like, yeah, you know. Yep. Uh, so I, I recommend that. Dope. All right, let's wrap this up. All right. We'll give you some socials. Uh, our website is www.bigdumbmonsters.com. Uh, you can find... What can you even find on that website anymore? I think just episodes. Yeah, that's it. we got to fix that thing. We really need to fix that website. Yeah, yeah it's got to uh, be a better... Because we've got a lot of shows that need to be put up on there and information about everybody in the network. These things. Oh, shit, that's true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It can we, be we need help with that shit, folks. Network wide. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you do websites? Email you us. Like to do a website. Yeah. Email us at bigdumbmonsters at gmail dot com, uh, where you can send us 
suggestions for beer we should drink, movies we should watch, changes to the show that we can make to make it better, whatever. Um, yeah, and if you uh, if you know how to work on websites, uh, that'd be dope. Um, you can find us on Facebook. We're uh, Big Dumb Monsters Pod. Uh, you can find us on Slasher, the all horror social network. We are Big Dumb Monsters Podcast, and you can occasionally find us logged into our Steam account, uh, Big Dumb Monsters. You can check us out on Instagram and Threads at Big underscore Dumb underscore Monsters. Um, you can watch the show live. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this. Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, man. Get live in the now. Like podcasts are like get the net. Yeah. Uh we have you can you can see our, our hideous fucking mugs. Yeah. Uh while you listen uh, yeah. to us ramble. Big Dumb Monsters is not just about the movies. Yeah. <laughs> We're people, damn it. Uh but you can check us out on Twitch and YouTube at Big Dumb Monsters. Uh we have a merch store which you should come check out. Mm-hmm. You get t shirts, banners, cups. Uh, bags, whatever you want, we're probably hawking something. Yeah, uh, for sure. Come check us out at T Public. Uh, you can search for the Big Dumb Monster Store there. Uh, you should check out our Snap, our Marvel Snap uh, Alliance. Yeah, if you play Marvel Snap, uh, yeah, I, join I'm our alliance. Tired of fucking carrying this goddamn alliance. Listen, man. <laughs> First of all, I do my share, <laughs> and I do half my share. <laughs> Listen, I added a bunch of points today. Okay, like, excellent. Uh, no, no, I, it, it, I'm hopelessly addicted to Snap, so I, I'm always playing. Yeah. Um, you can. We have a Discord. We put out songs there. There's a song for every episode. Yeah, yeah. That's a new feature. That's a, I like that. Um, I mean, hey, I've been doing that for Instagram for a while, but whatever. Yeah. No, Art gets all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> Today's song yeah, I picked was Atomic Dog, by the way, by uh, the Parliament of Funkadelic. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was a good choice. <laughs> Art, what was the song that you picked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adolepsy. Uh, because of that, I need another cough drop. <laughs> genetic mutations or something Gen- yes genetic mutations by analepsy Whoa. um yeah that might be up for the plugs we're uh we're some busy motherfuckers um Wednesday fighting with friends is back uh you can check that out on our channel yep uh, and then Friday, we will be back with the defenestration hour I mentioned we're doing the expendables. Uh, I cannot wait to talk about that movie. I was so excited for that movie when it first came out. Yeah. And I was, just, like, actually not let down by it. I was yeah. so fucking happy that I went and saw it. I, Tom uh, and I and his wife went to saw that the night it came. I went and see that uh, yeah. the night it came out. Yeah, I remember us being, like, just, like, thrilled with it. I'm yeah. just elated. Like, my childhood is complete. Yeah. And then they made two and three and four. And it was like, four is really bad. It, Two was okay. Yeah. Three was not good. Was not good. And then four is like offensively bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because like they're running out of people to put in those movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the 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 thrill as BB King once said, the thrill is gone, baby. Gone, baby. <laughs> um and like we said, we should have uh an announcement in the near future about something fun. Fingers crossed. Oh, you wanna watch Fire in the Sky? Just for one scene? Yeah. <laughs> no. No? Uh-huh. You don't want to be traumatized before you go to bed? <laughs> the abduction scene in A Fire in the Sky is the most is, hideous fucking shit yeah. you'll ever see in your life. You will be. If you're not afraid of being <laughs> abducted by aliens, you will be. Yeah. yeah. It will, it like. <sighs> How do I put this delicately? You'll be afraid of uh, aliens, as afraid of aliens as you will be of dropping the soap in a prison shower. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, let's let's leave it at that. Yeah, it's equally as traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, check that out. So <laughs> we'll give you some words of wisdom, and then uh, let you carry on with your evening. Don't let ghoulies eat your ass, and never sleep in a deathbed. Bye bye. <laughs>